listening to the NXT Podcast, your home for weekly NXT reviews and insight. The beautiful part of NXT is that when one dream ends, another dream begins. Find all of your NXT news, recaps, and analysis right here. So with that being said, we only have one question for you. Are you ready? We thought so. Let's get the show started right now. All right, everyone. This is Memphis Mark coming to you from Mullet Manor. And we're going to go over NXT this week for 611. But before we do... We're going to do a little recap of Battleground, uh, the first event inside in the UFC facility, the new parent company of WWE. And, uh, you know, the studio is is nicer, but um, uh, I don't know about size wise the difference. It looks a little bigger than what they use in Orlando uh, normally. Uh, but you know, it did look luxurious. It did look like it had more luxury in it and not just bench seats and that type. Uh, but anyway, interesting facility. The crowd was really out and the UFC fighters seem to have brought their kids and it was a real family friendly event for the UFC guys that usually deal in violence to take their kids and do a you know, a not so violent, choreographed, violent sport. Uh, but anyway, guys, man, Battleground started out with the first ever North American Women's Championship decided in a ladder match. And uh, man, you had Soul Ruka, you had Jada Parker, Mi Chin, Valen Henry. Lash legend and Kilani Jordan. And, uh, you know, Soul comes out first and Jada. And then, you know, it's just, it's a good, pretty good match. You know, every Meese Chin's going to sell good for you. You know, uh, Valen had the Las Vegas cowgirl look. Uh, you know, uh, Lash, you know, where was her focus in this? You know, was it on trick? Uh, you know, so, and Jada Parker, this is what I came out of this match of jada just needs more time uh looks like she has the basics she just needs more time uh soul ruka very smooth uh had a couple soul takers in there and uh Kiani jordan very good has progressed and progressed uh the match itself uh really good um uh, you know they lash is kind of like a giant in this match so she gets thrown out of there like they would throw a giant out of a match throw her over the top rope onto a, a ladder i mean a good little match good to go back and watch uh in the end though kind of a surprise uh kiani kilani jordan or, or lonnie i think is what she likes to be called but uh, miss jordan pulls it off and is your first north american champion uh, yeah, they even had a four-person sleeper in this one. So, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty good, though. Pretty good, though. After that, you've got Gallows and Anderson, the OC, going against the champs, Nathan Frazier and Axiom. And, uh, you know, it's the first live event for the OC, I believe they said, since uh, oh uh, Crown Jewel of uh, 2022. You know, so they were, you know, putting on a show. Uh, Frazier and Axiom, they come out fast, and they looked really good. Made everything look great. They're so crisp on their moves and flying around. Uh, man, they're flipping. Uh, uh, man, it's, uh, uh, the way uh, Nathan does that backflip off into a neck breaker or whatever you want to call that move is just the timing on that is just I never get tired of seeing that. Uh, you know, but uh, Axiom at one point is trying to put – gallows and a sleeper just too big of a man and uh you know uh, it's it's a, a lot of flipping and a lot of flopping on this one uh you know but nathan frazier and axiom are gonna end up with the win uh, nathan frazier gets the win actually uh but uh, okay of a match it's just those see they're good 
uh, they're they're a different style of old school mixed with Japan wrestling. This match was pretty good though, pretty good. You know, I'm not gonna the, the ladies match. I think overshine this one a little bit, but uh, uh, let me see. You've got uh, a cheerleaders coming. Uh, let me see. <laughs> Dante Chin is tearing up uh, uh, the Singapore Canes. Uh, let me see. They're really pushing the 2026 SummerSlam in Minnesota with two nights of entertainment. So they're going to extend SummerSlam out now. You know, uh, <laughs> everything going to become a big event, I guess, like uh, WrestleMania. I don't know. But uh, it's underground time now, and you've got Lola Vice going against Shayna Baszler. And uh, Shayna's always a beast. Uh, and Lola Vice really had the look in this match. She looked serious. She looked prepared. She came out. With everything going in the, in the you know, uh, uh, the fight was good. The fight was good. You know, it could have been so much better because Shayna is so much better. She had to slow down to make Lola look good. And eventually, Lola is going to win this one. Uh, kind of a weak move on Shayna. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, every once in a while, Lola looked really good in that. But Shayna looked really good. It, it's a weekend on that match. Match, but uh, and yeah, they got more Eddie Thorpe promo, uh, and then of course, uh, sexy grats, uh, sexy red congratulating Lonnie Jordan. Uh, yeah, then uh, then we got the uh, the men's North American Championship, it's a three way. You've got uh, Gallus with Joe Coffee, and you've got Wesley, and of course, you've got the champ, Uba Femi. And, uh, man, you know, uh, uh, Oba is, is a monster. He's kind of growing on me. His uh, awkward style, you know, kind of like it. Because Joe Coffey, yeah, he's like <laughs> like Booker T says, he's good to the last drop, man. That dude is just tough and old school. And, and Wesley, you know, I, I originally didn't like all the high-flying stuff he did. I thought a lot of it was overkill, but he's kind of slimmed a little bit back, uh, making it more effective. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I kind of like some of it, but uh, Oba's going to win this match. But uh, uh, he throws these – this is a pretty good match to go back and watch. Maybe the beginning of a giant in the future, what we thought maybe Omos would have been. Uh, you know, Oba really seems to be fitting the bill, uh, in this. So, uh, good match though. Good match. Uh, cannot complain. Uh, but then you've got, uh, the ladies championship, the cross promotion with TNA and NXT or WWE, however you want to put it. But, uh, you've got Jordan Grace, uh, the fire plug. Uh, going against Roxanne Perez, the prodigy. Now, Roxanne looks, you know, pretty good in this match, and everything goes, I guess, is the way they wanted it. Uh, Jordan Grace looks good. A couple slip-ups, but when she even has a slip-up, she covers. Or when somebody else has a slight miss, she knows to directly go and, and reroute the, the whole moves. And, I mean, just... A veteran in the ring. She really has surprised me, and I hope to see more of her in WWE. I don't know if that will be the case, but hopefully. Uh, but, yeah, Roxanne is going to end up winning that match. Tatum Paxley comes out, gets involved. Uh, somebody else does. I mean, you know, Jordan goes out, gets distracted, comes back in, puts her move on, and somehow Roxanne pops up and puts Papa Rox on Jordan Grace and gets the win, you know, uh, but looks a little beshuttled afterwards. And, uh, you know, uh, they end the show, uh, you know, it battleground was not bad, not bad at all. You know, if you can, you know, just turn on Peacock and watch it. If this was a, a pay per view event, I would have not been too happy with it, but it is, what it is, they say, and uh, that's going to lead us straight in to uh, to uh, six eleven, the NXT show, and uh, you know they start off, of course, with their recap. Uh, but then, then you've got Jada Parker, 
uh, going against, uh, oh, yeah, well, the key, uh, Lonnie Jordan comes out and does a spot. And of course, everybody's got to come out, Jada and then Mee Chin. And Jada's looking past Mee Chin. So that sets up the Jada Parker Mee Chin match. Mee Chin's kind of kind of become the uh, Swiss Army knife. She can really do anything. She can sell. She can get somebody over. She can look good. She can cr- uh, hype the crowd. Uh, so, yeah, uh, just, I mean, she's really good. She's got such good timing. Uh, but look, Jada just needs, she's better. She just needs more time. She's had a big, big old school body slam. And I know that sounds simple, but it looked good. Uh, so Jada, uh, is going to get there. Big, powerful girl going to, you know, make some moves. Uh, but, uh, the OC comes out during this match and they don't get involved until uh you know until jada goes outside the ring and grabs a chair and uh anderson then takes the chair from her which allows me chin to uh roll her up into a small package and get a win uh but me chin man i really wish they would do more with her uh, really think there's something there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, uh, they go back over a recap of how Gallus attacked Wesley, uh, at battleground after the match, after their match, you know, and so they're going to lead up to a six man tag a little later. Uh, but then they, they tease with Cody before they go to a commercial break, but they, uh, they come back with a good comical, uh, representation of chase you. Uh, every, the guys are all in there just, uh, bickering back and forth. And, uh, then Thea Hale comes in and lays the smacketh downeth. Uh, she gives them all hell. Yeah. And, uh, raises the roof on that one and a good little promo, just a, a good little spot to go back and check out. I will say, uh, I was surprised, uh, but they go into a, a six man tag You've got Gallus with the Coffee Brothers and Wolfgang uh, going against Wesley and Tyler Bate and uh, Pete Dunn, uh, which Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn are now known as the New Catch Republic, I believe. There, uh, but yeah, they, uh, you know, they uh, Peter's doing his fingers, or Pete is doing his fingers, uh, knocking everybody down, and uh, Joe Coffee. Hits, uh, I can't remember who he hit. Uh, oh, let me see. Um, uh, no, he hits Wesley. Joe Coffey hits Wesley with a clothesline in this match that is, uh, might I uh, say, APA esque. Uh, John Layfield would have been proud of, uh, of this clothesline from, uh, you know, where. Uh, really good match. I mean, uh, uh, coffee is just a monster, uh, does so good, uh, you know, and, and Gallus, uh, you know, they really look good in this, uh, you know, uh, Gallus is going to win the match too, but, uh, with all the European guys you have in there, uh, really you had everybody, but Wesley was, uh, I believe, uh, not born, born on our soul. Uh, and, uh, it looked like an, you know, an old school, somewhat of a match with the ad of the fingers. And, uh, of course, Tyler Bate, the big strong boy, uh, you know, his annex, uh, but yeah, good match. Gallus wins it. Uh, let me see. Uh, then they, they got the little promo spot with OTM, uh, out the bud. Uh, with Jada Parker and, uh, she's, uh, she's got a rematch with me Chin coming up. Uh, and, uh, she wants OC, uh, you know, OT, with OC out there, she wants OTM out there. Uh, it's all these letters, OC, OTM. Uh, but anyway, uh, and then, uh, Burnley Reese does a little promo with Anofi and Blade, which they've been developing their, uh, chemistry, but, uh, they seem to be a little worried, and Nofi and Blade do, about uh, her match with Wendy Chu, uh, the new Wendy Chu. You know who, Wendy Chu. Uh, but it's Wendy Chu, the new look. Uh, uh, and, uh, so, yeah, they, they are, they're a little worried. Uh, and Brindley's not because they're old, old pals. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me see. They've got Sol Ruka doing a... Um, 
pretty much a uh, a follow behind of her kind of like showing up to the UFC battleground event, and they do a little background and give her a chance to have the stick and 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 show a little bit of her personality. You know, not bad, not bad. I can't say uh, anything bad about it. You know, that's probably going to be the next push you're getting out of the women's division. I, I'm Valen probably, you know, uh, J.C. Jane with her STP nose piece. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, those are your, your big on the ladies' division, and apparently Miss Lonnie Jordan. Uh, but, yeah, good little, good little promo. Uh, but then they go to the Brindley Reese Wendy Chu match. Uh, and uh, the new look of Wendy Chu. I kind of like it. <laughs> kind of like it. Uh, she's been watching a little Bray Wyatt, a little Undertaker. A little cane, you know. She's been watching a little uh, the way her characteristics, her head turns, the way she plays to the crowd, to the to the uh, cameras, the makeup, the uh, facial expression or lack thereof. Um, <laughs> I like it. I didn't think I would. I did not think I would. But Wendy Chu is quickly becoming uh, Wendy Chu. Uh, you better put some respect on that, Achu. Uh, but yeah, Wendy Chu has a match. Brinley uh, has some good showing, but she seems a little freaked out. Uh, and she's going to, you know, get submitted. Uh, Brinley uh, gets submitted by, uh, you know, uh, by Wendy Chu. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the new look. I kind of like the debut of the new look there. So, um, yeah. All right. Uh, from there, uh, you got Aura Mensa and Ethan Page. Good little promo spot uh, they did for uh, that. And then uh, you got Mr. Stone confronting Roxanne out in the parking lot as she's giving a promo. And uh, he knows that uh, she's going to make the state of the ladies' division address tonight and you know he's he's trying to do a little snooping and see you know what she's going to talk about and uh you know uh she kind of lets her lets you know he lets her know that he's heard it he's going to call ava out all knowing ava uh and uh you know she won't give it up uh won't give up any information the only thing we gathered from that is mr stone needs to wear a tighter i mean a looser shirt uh you know or either take that top button unbutton there buddy uh, <laughs> you got that and then uh, of course you got Cody you got the champ shows up on NXT to do uh, I guess they're getting ready to head off to Scotland and uh, he does a little promo for uh, getting the crowd ready for Scotland in AJ Styles in an I quit match in Scotland so uh, coming up, we'll see how that goes. But he gets the crowd going and hollering and screaming. And then Trick comes out in his white stacks, man. <laughs> Trick coming out in his white stacks, 1970 style. What do you know about that? That's something I had on. Uh, but look, uh, you know, and he comes out and he, he kind of asked for a little wisdom from Cody. And he goes, uh, you know. Pretty much, uh, how do you go from being the hunter to being the hunted? And, of course, uh, Cody drops some uh, some verbs and some adverbs in there and, and, and tells him how it is, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, and, and then lets him know how his next opponent will be determined. It seems they're going to have a 25-man over-the-top rope battle roll. For the winner gets the shot at whoop that trick. <laughs> but then he kind of drops a little uh, a little uh, bomb there. A little pipe bomb, if I may. Uh, and he says that all brands will be participating pretty much. Uh, so, hey. It uh, looks like the interview's over. And then, uh, then trick stops him. And he's like, hey, man, I got to ask you something, man. You coming to the cookout July 4th, man. And so, <laughs> good little in. Good little in. They're trying to play on the, on the heartstrings with Trick, building him a little character there. I kind of like it. And then he says, even Trick goes, play Cody's music. All right. So good little, 
good little uh, spot. Uh, then then they've, they've got a Sean Spears and a Javon Evans. OG, young OG. Uh, doing a little promo with them. And then uh, and Dante Jen comes out and bust uh, some of those uh, uh, Singapore canes uh, on. You know, you know, he's doing his promo and he starts banging it and hitting everything and it tears up everything. So, uh, you know. Yeah, he's going through some canes. Uh, you know, uh, after that, you've got the ladies talking in the locker room, and somebody tries to introduce themselves to Wendy Chu. And Wendy Chu looks at him, and everybody leaves Wendy Chu alone. <laughs> and after that, they introduce uh, the uh, NIL class, uh, you know, and I got to do a little bit more research in that. I know the NIL involving basketball and football and, you know, major sports. I don't understand completely the aspects of uh, the NIL and uh, WWE, but I will find out. Uh, but then you're going to have uh, Lexus King. The TV star uh, going against Dante Chin in a Singapore cane match there, uh, the aforementioned. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, the match, you know, Dante jumps out first and goes in there. You know, he's already got, you know, two wins over. So they're trying to say that it was a fluke. So he's trying to go. And, man, look. Uh, as far as these cane matches go, I've seen a bunch of them, and you know they're okay. And but this one, you know, was pretty good, cause Chin beats the crap out of Lexus King for a while with that cane. Breaks one over him. I mean, there's they got canes hanging velcroed on the side of the of the outside where the fans are. I mean, they got them everywhere. So, but uh, Dante looks really good in here. And at one point in time. Lexus puts the cane, kind of uh, menangles it in the wrapping of the turnbuckle to where it's straight out like a projectile. And it, like he's going to uh, uh, do a, uh, a throw into the turnbuckles and catch Chin. Chin reverses it, causes the match you think to maybe make that uh, turn to where Chin's going to get his third victory. But the crafty, somewhat veteran Lexus King pulls out a win uh you know and uh he looked pretty good doing it looked pretty good doing it so uh yeah we'll see how they uh you know uh well i did leave out one quick aspect uh you know uh lexus always has that scepter or that cane that he comes out with and and uh, dante had the singapore cane and and lexus had the real cane so kind of like uh, Dante ended up in this particular situation, bringing a cane to a uh, gunfight because uh, he gets taken out. But yes, Alexis King gets uh, a little uh, uh, vindictive uh, of win, but he gets a, a, a little satisfaction uh, for it. Uh, and then after, they've got J.C. Jane and Jasmine talking back there. And of course, J.C. Jane has got her Stone Temple Pilots mask on and uh, uh, Life in Vaseline. And, and, uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, Cody comes out dashing. Cody comes out of the bag. He brings the mask from dashing Cody and gives it to J.C. Jane. So, hey, you know, she's got a little something, something to, uh, extra to take to the ring. Everybody seems in awe of Cody Rhodes, the WWE champion uh but then they have a a good little um a promo with eddie thorpe uh, he is reborn they got a couple of the old timers you know wahoo and chief strongbow they you know kind of bring a little tug on my heartstrings with that one but eddie thorpe is back uh yeah and then uh, before the his match though they got a quick promo with oc the oc and me chin and she gets a match with lonnie uh, coming up so uh you know me chen is saying she's the hbic so i'll have to look that up i have no idea what that means but anyway uh after a little security scare at the desk we have the guy the first time i believe i've seen him is tavon heights going against eddie thorpe the reborn eddie thorpe and uh i, th I thought i'd heard of uh well, i thought i knew the look 
of Mr. Heights, and I did a little research, and he is actually a true uh, bronze and silver uh, uh, wrestler, uh, bronze and, and silver medal winner. Uh, won a bronze uh, in Norway and won a silver at the Panamanic Games in Tokyo. Uh, and a good little start. You know, he's 6'3", good guy. You know, he's got the wild, wild, wacky look. And he's going against Eddie Thorpe, the king of the underground, according to Booker, Key, Booker T. But, uh, you know, Eddie sells some in this match. And Tavon looks really good, kind of. And to tell you the truth, I mean, you know that Eddie's going to get the win. Uh, but Tavon, they do not let it uh, just be a squash match. You know, he, he represents himself really good. And so even so, uh, after the match and Eddie wins the match, uh, they go to a spot with no quarter catch crew. And you've got Dempsey telling Miles, go get Tavon, bring him to me, bring him here. <laughs> That's the best accent I can do, but... Uh, yeah, they're carrying on with that. They're saying that maybe they need a new member, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, you got Ava and Mr. Stone, uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, Roxanne. And Stevie Turner comes in and uh, snitches them out. Um, and then you've got uh, uh, Javon Evans going against the chairman, Sean Spears, in kind of their revenge match, you know, and uh, man, the young OG, bouncy. He likes it bouncy, they say. Uh, but he is just looking fantastic, you know. Uh, and at the start of the match, oh, Sean Spears does throw the old, uh, <laughs> uh, he throws his headgear, his little scarf in his uh, face and then pounds him. And, and I, I, a real quick story, I can remember years ago being in, in the nightclub business, I had a gentleman we had to, to uh, uh had an altercation in the parking lot and the gentleman i saw with the cigarette in, in his mouth and i just i was thinking he's gonna try to thump that in my face and hit me and <laughs> and you you uh see this in the past but actually this happened to me it was like in slow motion uh and he did it and i moved and i hit him with the best punch i've ever hit anyone and that big son of a gun went to one knee, and then I was like, oh, dear God. <laughs> that big old guy come back up. But we are friends to this day. So if you're out there, Jay Wells, uh, representing Silky Sullivan's on Bill Street, God bless you and family. But, yeah, we'll go back to the match, man. Look, Sean Spears looks really good uh, uh, in this match, man. Uh, uh, Javon, I could go through all of these highlights or whatever, but this is a good match to go back and watch. Now, Sean Spears is going to get the win. Uh, but look, uh, this is a uh, a good match to go check out. And then and, and, and look afterwards. You got Javon all bloody in his mouth and everything where he missed. And I believe it was when he hit the desk. So, uh, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, let me see. Uh, and then afterwards, you got Tony D and the family showing up. And uh, they, they, they end up around Tyler and, and Pete and Axiom and Nathan and... They all, you know, they've all had that, that, uh, their name on that, that cup. And Tony D is kind of flaunting it in their face there. And Nathan seems, you know, a little distracted, a little distracted. Uh, but we'll see where that goes. But they end it all with, uh, Miss Roxanne, the ladies champ, coming out and giving the state of the women's address and uh you know she calls ava out there and you know all all knowing ava and ava comes out and then uh you know as you know uh stp uh, i mean i mean uh jc jane and jasmine come out and they want to get in on it and then lash comes out with miss jackson and you know they want to get on it and then uh and then lola comes out so they're all in the ring uh jabbering gibbering and uh and miss jackson tells uh lola pretty much shut your mouth girl and uh lola says really oops upside your head and kicks miss jackson and from that point on the melee is on and uh at the end uh everybody's thrown out but lola and roxanne so you know that's probably going to end up in a tag team match next week but we will see because they've got the big Scotland event 
uh, you know, coming up, uh, if they're ever going to throw a curve ball into Cody, will it be there? I doubt it. Uh, will uh, Drew McIntyre win in front of his, you know, his hometown crowd? Possibly. We will have to see. Uh, but as always, guys, we're going to end it up here. Uh, I just want to tell everyone, if you can, get out and help a shelter. Do whatever you can. Donate or donate time. And if you, as always, spay and neuter. And this is Memphis Mark, and I'm out. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com and for all of these shows ad free head over to patreon.com slash wwe podcast until then we'll see you next time